I think we can all agree that most jobs nowadays involve working with data to some extent. We produce and consume so much data, and the ability to understand our data and make decisions based on the correct data is extremely valuable. Hey, it's Mo Chen here, and I am a data and analytics analyst within the financial services industry. In today's video, I'm going to put myself in your shoes, and I'm going to show you how I'd become a data analyst if I had to do it all over again. I've been working with data for years, had my fair share of successes and failures, and learned probably way too many things that I don't actually need. So to make it simple for you, I'm going to break this video down into three major parts that I think you need to land a job as a data analyst. First, I'll focus on the general tips I wish someone had given me before I started my journey in the world of data. Then I'll focus on the skills you'll need, and then I'll focus on how you can apply and showcase these skills to get a job as a data analyst. For those of you who are interested in my background, let me just touch on that briefly. My education background is a bachelor's degree in economics and a master's degree in finance and economics. I worked within the financial services industry ever since I graduated. I worked mainly within the credit risk space and the investment banking before landing my job as a data analyst. Beginning your journey as a data analyst can be overwhelming. There's so much information out there, so many courses you can take, both at universities and by yourself online, so many certifications you can acquire, so many projects and challenges you can complete. So my number one tip would be to define a learning roadmap for yourself. Think of where you want to be in the future, what kind of tasks, jobs you'd enjoy doing, and tailor what you learn according to that. If you learn to code, make sure you code with purpose, rather than just starting to code anything and everything. Coding is a never-ending journey, and if you don't narrow down the specific areas you want to tackle, you're going to end up being a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none. Tip number two would be to always set aside time in your weekly schedule for learning and development. The world of technology and data changes so quick, if you don't put in the effort to stay up to date, you will get left behind. When I first started my career, I didn't know much about cloud computing, for example. But now that all the big corporations are trying to migrate to the cloud, for the various benefits such as scalability, availability, or on-demand computing, I've been actively learning about cloud computing. I got an AWS certification and also completed an online data engineering degree that's focused on cloud data engineering. On that note, let me know in the comments below what you're currently learning about or are planning to learn about. And the final tip would be to enjoy the learning process, the journey. I made the mistake way too many times of focusing on the final product too much, stressing myself out, putting myself under extra pressure, whilst losing sight of all the cool things I've learned along the way. If you're truly passionate about working with data, you will certainly enjoy the endless things you can learn. Just make sure that you do take the time to reflect on what you've accomplished. Now moving on to the skills you'll need as a data analyst, and let me just break this section down into four parts. So you'll need technical skills, you'll need soft skills, you'll need analytical skills, and last but not least, you'll need industry knowledge. Let me start with technical skills, because it is probably the easiest to learn in the sense that it's tangible, something you can easily measure. I recommend starting with Excel and SQL. They're the most popular tools out there, and mastering these will give you an extremely strong starting point on which you can build your career. To use a little home building analogy here, Think of Excel and SQL as the foundations of your house, which are designed to distribute the weight of the building evenly and provide a firm footing. Start with Excel first, as you don't have to write all the code yourself. You can point and click using the UI. You can even record macros and then view them in VBA Editor, saving you the effort of writing something from scratch, but still having the code available to further enhance. I'd like to highlight here that advanced Excel skills are the bare minimum a data analyst should know. It is completely possible to get an entry-level data analyst job with just Excel. Once you've gotten to a good point and feel comfortable with Excel, move on to learning SQL, which in my opinion is the perfect gateway drug to coding. After you've mastered both Excel and SQL, the next step would be to pick a programming language. I'd recommend Python just because of its popularity and ease to learn. Now with Python, make sure you focus on learning things that are applicable to data and analytics rather than, say, general programming. Now, I'm not saying that end-to-end -end Python programming courses are bad, 
But if you want to save yourself some time, please just take the ones that are specifically designed for data and analytics, or data science, or something along those lines. It won't hurt you, of course, if you take full programming courses, but unless you have so much extra time on your hands, I'd recommend you don't do that. Make sure you understand the basics such as arrays, lists, dictionaries, mutable and immutable objects. Make sure you're familiar with the pandas and numpy libraries for data wrangling, and say matplotlib or seaborn for data visualization. Once you feel comfortable with the programming language of your choice, you can move on to data visualization using BI tools. There are lots of tools out there, but I'd recommend you either learn Power BI or Tableau, given they're the most common and popular. I myself use Tableau at my organization, and being able to create meaningful and impactful visualizations helps me deliver my message every single time. You can extract all the data in the world, clean it, manipulate it, wrangle it as much as you can. If you cannot turn your data into actionable insights that your audience can easily digest, comprehend, and drive actions off of, then what's the point? Storytelling with data sounds like a cliche, but translating complex messages with vast data sets behind them into simple charts, tables, and dashboards in a visually appealing way is a crucial skill itself. I mean, ask yourself the question, would you rather read dry PDFs and flick through PowerPoint presentations, or would you rather use dynamic, interactive dashboards? Next up, soft skills. This, to me, really is about common sense. Treat people the way you'd want to be treated. One book that really helped me with seeing things from other people's perspective is the famous one from Dale Carnegie, or Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Make sure you give it a read. It's short, easy to read, and super entertaining. Learn to communicate in a clear and concise manner, whether it's verbal or written communication. Don't write long emails as one paragraph, for example. Actually, don't write long emails, period. No one likes to read short stories at work. Line spacing was invented for a reason. Use it. Structure your message. One simple thing I like to do, for example, when emailing people is to section my email into context and ask paragraphs. This way, my stakeholders can clearly see where to get information from and what they have to do. Or say when I present to a less technical audience, I use simple language that even my grandparents can easily understand. Presenting isn't about showcasing how smart you are, but about efficiently delivering the content in a way that your audience can easily understand. Of course, when I present to a more technical audience, I go into the details such as the underlying code, the formulas, the functions, so on and so forth. Moving on to the analytical skills, and by analytical skills, I mean problem solving skills, innovative and creative skills, but what you're probably most interested in is math skills. To be frank, the level of math needed really just depends on your roles and responsibilities and tasks. But knowing some basic descriptive statistics such as mean, medium, or whether your data is skewed or not, is always a good starting point. I've learned about probability optimization, advanced econometrics, and statistics during my bachelor's and master's degree. And while it does come in handy that I've studied them and know them, it doesn't make that much of a difference on a daily basis. A good rule of thumb would be the more data science your role gets, the more math you'll need. But don't worry, the math is definitely something you can pick up along the way, and you can always just Google it and learn it straight away. And just to go through some of the other analytical skills I mentioned, problem solving is obviously really important, as you can have all the technical skills in the world. If you can't actually solve the business problem, your technical skills are useless. Being creative, innovative, and thinking outside the box, again, might sound like a cliche, but the ability to come up with good ideas, combined with the ability to actually execute them, can really differentiate you from the others. That's why constantly learning and evolving is really important, so you can come up with new, better, more cost-efficient, and less time-consuming solutions. And the last, but not least, of the skills, industry knowledge. It's all good and wonderful that you're an expert in Excel, can code well in SQL and Python, and can create beautiful visualizations in Tableau or Power BI. Without understanding the industry you work in, all of this means very little. Make sure to take the time and effort to understand the industry landscape your company's in. Of course, you can easily read and understand all the data points and metrics as they're written in plain English, but to really be able to ask the right questions and look for deeper analysis, 
you need to be able to understand the bigger picture. What's the problem you're trying to solve? What's the benefit of solving this problem? Do you understand how your company's systems, products, processes work? My master's degree in finance and economics combined with my retail and investment banking background helps me big time when it comes to working with banking data. Say, for example, I don't have to look up terms such as credit default swaps, term loans, bullet loans, or unsecured credit. It's also a lot easier to spot if some of the metrics or figures are a bit off, if you know what they should be approximately normally. And finally, I just want to touch on how you can apply and showcase what you already know. To be frank here, nothing beats work experience, in my opinion. If you have real life hands on experiences of working on projects where you had to use your technical soft skills and analytical skills, those for sure are the best examples to help you land your next job. No matter what certifications you have, courses you've taken, badges you've earned, work experience comes out as the winner every single time. But also, don't worry if you've got no data analyst experience and are just trying to get into the industry right now. There are lots of other ways out there you can apply and showcase your skills. Say, for example, you can do coding challenges online, or you can work on your own projects and upload them to a site like GitHub. You can download data from places such as Kaggle, Google Dataset Search, or US.gov, define your own scope and the problem you're trying to solve, and get hands on. Pick interesting data sets that are fun, rather than some dry employment and tax figures. You can find all sorts of data related to sports, movies, Google Play Store, and much, much more. I'd say anywhere between 5 to 10 projects would be an ideal amount. Any less is just a little too few, and any more is definitely just overkill. And that's it. We've come to the end of the video. Starting your journey in the world of data can be overwhelming, but if you're truly determined to become a data analyst, I'm sure you will enjoy the challenges ahead of you. I learned how to use Excel, code, and visualize data by myself through self-learning. It wasn't even something I knew even after I finished my master's in finance and economics. If I was able to do it, I'm sure you can do it too. If you like this video, then make sure you check out these videos as well. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.